Hey YouTube, Ed here with Jack of All Trades and welcome to another video. So today what we're going to do, if you haven't gathered by the intro, we're going to talk about my get home bag, bug out bag, bug in bag, whatever it is you want to call it. I'm going to call it my survival bag. I'm not going to relegate this bag to just getting home or just bugging out. This is going to be uh, a bag that I'm going to leave packed up. And I, like I said, I'm going to call it my survival bag. I can throw it in the truck if I need to get home with it. Or if I, if crap hits a fan and I need to leave in a hurry, I'm going to have three to four days worth of survivability out of this bag. But before we get into that portion of the video, I got to ask you to go down as always and hit that like and subscribe button. Make sure you ring that notification bell so you get notified of upcoming videos. And if you like this kind of content and if you're liking what I'm doing out here on the channel, please let me know in those comments. Uh, that's, that's the only way I know if I should keep doing this kind of stuff. And then if there's anything specific you want to see me do out here on the channel, let me know in those comments and I will certainly make it a point to get that done. All right, so all this stuff you see here on the table, uh, this is all crap I had in this bag. Now, I didn't just go out and willy-nilly start putting stuff together. Uh, I gleaned information off of many sources. I did a lot of reading, and I did, or did some reading, I should say. And admittedly, I watch a lot of other content creators on YouTube. You know, guys like uh, Dave Canterbury, uh, Sean Kelly from Corporal's Corner, TA Outdoors, Self-Reliance Outfitters, that kind of stuff. I, I've watched a lot of YouTube videos and I gleaned a lot of the information off these guys. I'm by no means an expert, <laughs> not even close. I do have some military background. I do have some experience uh, being in the woods, but I'm not, a, I'm not a survivalist expert. So I am piggybacking off of the information I've gotten from other sources. So I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and insult your intelligence and make you think I'm some kind of a survivalist because I'm not. I'm going to work towards that. I want to work towards getting better at the skills. I'm going to come out here and I'm going to practice these skills. But at the end of the day, uh, everything I've assembled here has been from watching other people and what they do. And this is, this is what I've put together as a kit. Now, the other part of this kit is to try and keep it fairly budget friendly. So some of these things I've bought at places like Harbor Freight or Walmart, or even Goodwill, things like that. And just, I did this to show you and to prove to myself that I could put together a viable kit that I can use as a survival bag, get home bag, bug out bag, bug in bag, whatever it is you want to call it, and not break the bank in the process. So I want to give credit to credit is due. Uh, thanks to Dave Canterbury and Canterbury and uh, Sean Kelly and all those guys out there on YouTube that have done things like this and given me a bit of inspiration to go out and start trying to do it myself. And at the same time, it's going to provide me with a little bit of content for the channel because I'm going to do some more of this on the channel. All right, so the first, first and foremost, you have to have a bag. Uh, again, sticking with the theme of not spending a lot of money, I had this bag laying around. This, this is nothing more than a computer bag. This is a bag that I carried for work to carry my laptop and all my stuff that I needed for work for years and years and years. So I've upgraded my bag for work and rather than throw this away, because there's really nothing wrong with it, other than the fact that it's getting old, I have relegated it to my survival bag. So now the things that I've decided to put into this bag, I started off with uh, the 10 C's of survivability. Again, uh, sucking information off of uh, Dave Canterbury and Corporal's Corner, uh, the 10 C's of survivability. These guys preach this all the time, and so do other YouTube content creators. So the first C of survivability is the number one thing, which is cutting. Uh, quite obviously, you need to have a way to cut things, and the backbone to any cutting system is quite obviously having a knife or knives in your kit. Now, I'm the kind of guy that likes to be redundant on things. If one knife is good, two knives are better, three is even better yet. And in this, in this instance, I've got four knives in my kit, and we're going to go over those. Now, this is, this is a knife. Uh, it's made by Buck. 
it's actually a buck knife. It is approximately three inches in length. It's a full tang knife. Uh, the knife goes all the way through the handle. It's very light, it's very small, it's very compact, and it's very, very sharp. And this was a knife that I actually won, I think, at a DU banquet or something like that, or a Pheasants Forever banquet. Comes with a sheath. It's uh, made out of stainless steel. It's made in the USA. Uh, it's very light, and like I said, it holds an edge very well. So I had this laying around. I literally had it just sitting in my cupboard where all my other hunting stuff was. So I decided to relegate that to my survival bag. Uh, this knife here, I've had this knife for years. And this was actually a knife that I made in high school. I took an old file and I made a knife in shop class. This was my shop project. And it's been lying around for years and years and years. It's high carbon steel because it is made from a file. So I can use this to scrape a ferrocium rod. Uh, and it holds an edge really well because it is made out of file material. Again, this was a knife that I had just lying around in my, uh, in my shop, in my hunting gear cabinet and hadn't been used in years and years and years. Now, why not put it in my survival bag and use it as a survival knife? Uh, I've got a folding knife here. Uh, I don't even know the brand of this folding knife. I've again had this knife for years, but it is made in the USA. It's not Chinese made. It's got a, a knife blade on it. It's got a screwdriver, i.e. knife blade on it. It's just another means to cut things if I needed to. Uh, so I do have that in my kit as well. I also have a multi-tool here. Uh, this again, this was a multi-tool that was a freebie. It's not a Gerber. Uh, but it is it is a pliers and it's got various cutting instruments on it It's got a saw blade that I don't think you could saw anything with uh, But it does have a knife on here as well. But the, the big thing is Is this has a pliers on it with a means to cut it's got some screwdrivers. It's got a, a, a little extra Kit here of screwdriver tips and things like that. Like I said, this was a freebie Again, it's, it's made in the USA. It's made out of stainless steel. It's not made in China. Comes with a neat little sheath. It was laying around. It's doing nothing. Now, maybe someday I'll upgrade this to a Gerber or a Leatherman. But for the time being, this is what I put in my pack because it's just lying around doing nothing. I figured I would use it for that. Now, to expand on my cutting system, I also bought a folding saw. And I believe I bought this folding saw at Harbor Freight. These were on sale, it's cheap, it's light, but it does have a flexible blade and it does cut. I have tried it and it actually cuts reasonably well. Now understand the intent and purpose of this bag. This is a two to three day survival bag. This is not a long-term bag. This is a bag that I can use for two to three days. If I take care of the gear, maybe a little longer than two or three days, this will certainly cut some things. And you know what, if I break it, it's not the end of the world. It didn't cost me a hardly anything. I think I think it was under $10 at Harbor Freight. Regardless of what it cost, it's irrelevant. But the blade locks, it's got a locking mechanism on it, so it, I don't have to worry about it folding up. Those teeth are fairly sharp. Uh, actually, they're very sharp, and it actually locks into the closed position as well. Like I said, it's very, very cheaply made, but it'll get the job done. Additionally to that, I have added a uh, Harbor Freight pound and a quarter hatchet. Uh, you've seen me do a video on this before. I like this hatchet. Uh, it's It holds an edge really well, and it is perfect for this kind of thing. It cost me $13, and I was able to add it to my kit. All right, let's talk about the next C of survivability, which is combustion. And, and everybody and anybody who does uh, bushcrafting or survival or stuff like that carry Bic lighters with them. Uh, I usually have a Bic lighter in my pocket, just part of my EDC, my everyday carry. But I've also got a couple of Bic lighters in my uh, in my kit. I intentionally put pink and orange Bic lighters in my kit for a very specific reason. If you put these down on the ground, they're much easier to see in, in that respect. Black lighters, green lighters, lighters like that, you can put them on the ground and you can very easily overlook them. And... I bought these on Amazon in a multi-pack and they were they were multicolored like this. They're very, very bright. I did this very specifically just because when you do put them on the ground, they stand out and I will not forget to pick them up. 
Now, staying with the redundancy thing, I also did pick up some windproof matches. Uh, I picked these up on Amazon, and again, they come in brightly orange, bright orange colored cases, uh, so you can't forget that they're here. These are not weatherproof cases. This was a very inexpensive set. I think I got like a half a dozen of these for 10 bucks, and they came full of matches. Uh, the, they're weatherproof, like I said. They come with uh, a whole bunch of, uh, of sulfur on the tip. So they'll burn for quite a while. They'll help you uh, get a fire going. But like I said, the cases are not weatherproof. So I store them in a Ziploc bag. I put two of these cases in my, in my survival bag. They do have a striking surface built into them. They do work. They, they will make fire and they burn quite well and quite readily. Uh, there's a whole bunch of sulfur on here. They stink to high heaven, but they do work. Very, very inexpensive. Like I said, I've got, uh, I think I got a half a dozen of these or something like that for like 10 bucks. So I put a couple of them in my survival bag. I've got a couple of them at home as backups uh, for maybe a camping bag or something like that. But just another way to start fire other than the Bic lighter. And then quite obviously, like everybody else, I've got a Ferris CM rod with a striker in the kit as well to help me light fire. So between... The Bic lighters, the weatherproof matches, and the ferrocium rod, I've got a really good way to get fire going. And something I just threw in for fun was a pencil sharpener. Uh, you could quite literally take a stick and stick it in your pencil sharpener, and you can twist the stick around inside the pencil sharpener, and it will make shavings inside here. In this little container on here, it'll actually catch, catch the shavings. And that will help you to maybe make some tinder material. It actually works pretty well. I've tried it before. You just take your knife and you whittle a stick into a, a relative pencil shape. Spin it inside the pencil sharpener to make yourself some tinder. That's just another part of the combustion system I have. And then I've got a, a Ziploc bag filled full of cotton ball soaked in Vaseline. Uh, really good way to get fire going. The ferrocium rod will fire these things up almost every time, guaranteed. So just a really good way to get some tinder going. All right, the next C of survivability is cover. Uh, so what I did was I went to Harbor Freight, picked up some tent stakes. One, two, three, four, five, six tent stakes. These are plastic tent stakes. Uh, you can use these to stake down a tarp or any number of things to help you build a shelter. Uh, the neat thing about these plastic tent stakes is you can also shave off shavings with them with the spine of your knife to make uh, tinder material. And actually these burn quite well, so you can use these as a fire, uh, fire starter or to help you implement a fire. And then I picked up a tarp. I believe this is a 9 by 7 tarp. This is plenty big of a tarp to, uh, to give you at least a shelter half or even a, a bit of an A-frame tarp, if you will to give you some cover. So that is the next C of survivability is cover. And then in addition to that, do have a very lightweight uh, fleece blanket. Now, admittedly, this isn't much. I would love to have a wooby or a wool blanket or something more substantial in the kit than this, but I was running out of room and those heavier blankets are bulky. Blankets as a general rule are pretty bulky to be of any substance. This is just a really thin fleece blanket and in conjunction with a shelter and a fire, I can wrap this around me and it can help retain some of that body heat. I might not get a lot of sleep depending on how warm it is, but it is something to help me retain a little bit of the heat and still fit within my bag. The next C of survivability is your container. Uh, and when they talk about container, you're talking about some kind of a container to carry and hold water. Uh, I picked both of these up at Walmart. I have a stainless steel cup and I have a stainless steel container. Now, the, the stainless steel container I picked up at Walmart, it's got a rubber seal in the lid so it won't leak. And it's single walled. This is not a double wall vacuum sealed container. It's just a single walled stainless steel, for lack of a better term, canteen. Uh, this was actually a little more expensive than I thought it should be. This thing was right around $18, but it comes with a really nice uh, lid that's got a rubber seal in it. 
It's got a little handle on it. And at the end of the day, I can fill this up with water. And since it's single walled, I can put that right in my fire to boil water and I can sterilize water with it. So it does everything that a container is gonna do. And this cup wasn't horribly cheap. I wanna say this cup was right around $15. Uh, it's a 16 ounce cup and it'll hold quite a bit of water, uh, 16 ounces. But you can also use this cup to cook. You can do all kinds of things with this cup and they do nest together for easy packing. So the next C of survivability is cordage. And I have uh, various, again, multiple redundant forms of cordage here. I've got some uh, pretend 550 cord. And when I mean it's pretend, it's not really actually military 550 cord. And it does not have 550 pounds of tensile strength. I believe this stuff uh, is advertised to have about 300 pounds of tensile strength, which is certainly enough. Uh, you got to watch the tensile strength on these. I know the Harbor Freight uh, 550 cord, if you will, is only good for like 150 pound tensile strength. So this is some stuff I picked up at my local home center. It was actually in the clearance bin. Uh, these were like the $1.99 or $2.99 clearance bin or something like that, but they were 300 pounds. So I picked up several of these. Actually, I picked up almost everything they had because I like 550 cord. I use it all of the time, not just for this, but in my everyday life. Then I picked up some uh, tarred bank line. Uh, I bought this on Amazon. This was not real expensive. This came from Texas Bushcraft. Uh, it's tarred bank line. It's twisted. It's got, uh, it's number 36 size. I got 120 feet of it here. This is a quarter pound roll. And I want to say this has got a tensile strength of like 300 pounds as well. But this stuff is exceedingly handy. You can use this to make ridge lines for your shelters. You can use this to help make you shelters. You can use tarred bank line for all kinds of things. But uh, 121 feet of cordage right here. It's very small. It's very compact. It is tarred. So it will last a long time. It won't degrade in weather. And it's just very, very handy. And while I was in Harbor Freight, I picked up three spools of mechanics wire. These are 25 foot spools of mechanics wire. They were 98 cents a piece. They don't weigh anything. They don't take up any room. And why wouldn't you put these in here? I can think of 101 uses to have mechanics wire. So I've got 75 feet of mechanics wire here in a very, very small package. And with my Gerber or with my fake Gerber tool, uh, my multipliers, I can use this mechanics wire again to help build shelters, do any number of things with it. And for the for three bucks and the, the minimal weight that this is going to add to my pack, that's just additional cordage. And again, while I was at Harbor Freight, I picked up a uh, 100 pack of 11 inch cable ties. Uh, if nothing else, you can use these again to help you start fires and things of that effect. But again, I can think of 101 reasons to have some some cable ties lying around. They're very quick to deploy. If you're building a shelter and you just need to zip tie something together permanently, these aren't really horribly strong, but they will help you hold things together while you're using your bank line or your mechanics wire, say for building a shelter. Absolutely no reason you shouldn't have a package of 11 inch cable ties. These lay right in the bottom of my pack. Again, almost no weight. There's nothing there. They don't take up hardly any room. Why not put them in there? All right, the next C of survivability is cotton or cotton cloth. Uh, most guys carry bandanas. Some people carry a shemog. Some people carry them both. Again, I went a little bit redundant and I got two bandanas. They say you should always carry two bandanas. These are 100% cotton. I bought these at Walmart. These are just your basic bandana cotton cloths. You can use these for any number of things. You can use these for first aid. You can use these for cleaning up. You can use these to make char cloth. You can use these to filter a large particulate out of water if you're sucking it out of a river or something like that. Any number of reasons why you should have cotton cloth. Pick those up at Walmart, very inexpensive. Put those in your pack. Tape, car cargo tape is the next C of survivability. So I've got a couple of options here. Uh, I've got two one inch rolls of Gorilla Tape. And in actuality, I had a hard time finding one inch rolls. And I wanted, I wanted one inch because two inch kind of makes your pack a little bulky. So I bought a two inch roll of Gorilla Tape and I cut it in half. 
I basically used a hacksaw and I cut it in half. So I have two rolls of Gorilla Tape. I put them inside of Ziploc bags to help keep them dry so they don't ever get wet. And then again, while I was at Harbor Freight, I picked up another one inch roll of self-adhesive tape. Uh, this stuff is supposed to stick when it's wet. It's supposed to stick to everything. I don't know, but it was a buck 30 or some nonsense like that. And I, I've talked to guys who've used this stuff and they say this is really good. It's basically for the most part, uh, self-adhesive electrical tape or something like that. I'll put a link to all this stuff in the description so you know what it is. But I've got some several kinds of tape options, again, sticking with the redundant nature of the whole pack. Uh, the next sea of survivability is a compass. Uh, I picked this compass up off of eBay or uh, Amazon, excuse me. It's a sun toe compass. It is not a, it's not a, an azimuth pointing style compass. Uh, Cause at the time when I bought this, that was a little more money than I was willing to spend. Uh, I do still have two kids at home. And so therefore I have no money. So as a result, I bought this. It's still a good brand name. Sunto is a really good brand name, a compass. It just isn't the uh, style with the lid that opens up that you can point and shoot an azimuth with, but it will point you in the direction that you need to go. You just have to put it in your hand and kind of guesstimate as to the direction you're going. The point of a compass is to basically walk a straight line. Uh, now I have a military lens attic compass, but I keep that in my hunting pack and the, they're very expensive. They're, they're extremely expensive. They're a couple hundred dollars for a good lens attic compass. This, this compass cost me like 35 bucks. Like I said, it's made by a good reputable company. It's very lightweight. It comes with a lanyard so I can put it around my neck. It's very thin. It doesn't take up any room in my pack and they do come with some kind of a warranty. So, and I know, uh, uh, the bushcrafters out there that do carry compasses, they like the Sunto brand. So that's what I got. So the next sea of survivability is a cloth sail needle. That is the one thing I don't have in this pack, not yet. You just can't go down to your local Walmart or Walgreens or store and buy a cloth sail needle. You kind of got to order those. I don't have one, uh, but that's going to be something I incorporate into my pack. And then the final thing in the 10 C's of survivability is candling. i.e. a flashlight. So I've got, again, two flashlights here. I've got a small AA flashlight. And again, this was a flashlight that I had laying around. This is made by a company called LumaPro. It's uh, water resistant. It's got a little rubber uh, push button here. It's a AA battery. And then another uh, flashlight here made by a company called Coast. Again, this is a waterproof battery with a rubber membrane button on the back. This is a AAA. This takes one AAA battery and this takes two AA batteries. And then in the Ziploc bag here, I've got replacement batteries to go along with the kit. These are very lightweight uh, flashlights. They're not headlamps. I know a lot of people really like headlamps, but with these small flashlights, if I need to go hands-free, I just put it in my mouth and I'm hands-free. Uh, I didn't have a headlamp. I didn't find a headlamp that I liked. I had, again, these lying around and keeping with the concept of keeping this as budget friendly as possible. I used as much stuff as I had just laying around and these are good brands and they do work. I've tested both of them. I know they do work. So I figured why not put them in my pack? Eventually someday uh, I'll put a headlamp in there, but these do get the candling taken care of and it does fit the criteria. Additionally, along with those two flashlights, again, sticking with the redundancy thing, everybody's got cell phones in their pockets. And pretty much all of these modern cell phones have a flashlight function on them. So you can also use your cell phone as a flashlight. So that covers the 10 C's of survivability. Now, quite obviously, I have other stuff in here that is not part of those 10 C's that you're gonna need to have in your survival pack. Like over here, I've got four uh, camping meals. Those are Walmart camping meals. I've eaten those things before. They really taste like a bag of ass. They're really not very flavorful, but they do have the nutrition value that you need to get you through two, three, maybe four days of survival if you had to. Uh, so I do have those in there. I picked them up. I got them on sale. I think they cost me like $8. 
Eventually, I would like to replace those with MREs, but the other nice thing about those is they're not nearly as bulky as an MRE. And until I get a larger pack that can hold more, those are gonna be what I use because they do take up very, very little room. I also have several packets of instant coffee. Uh, these don't provide any nutritional value, but they do provide you with some camp caffeine. And in a survival situation, sometimes you might just need a, a little bit of a pick-me-up, something to you know get the blood moving again because you're running out of energy or something like that. These will give you that quick shot of energy you might need to finish putting up your shelter or get you through the remainder of the day. Uh, you've been walking all day, you're tired, and you just need that little burst of energy, a, a shot of instant coffee and some boiled water. It's amazing what that'll get you done. I've been on mission in the in Iraq and Kuwait and places like that where just that little quick shot of energy to get you through the mission is all you really needed. So I did put some instant coffee in my pack. Additionally, inside my pack with some food, I put in three, bottle, uh, three bottles of uh, bottled water. I don't like carrying water, but you can't survive without water. Three bottles of water seemed like an okay thing to pack up. And uh, so I did throw three of those in there. And then additionally, I put in a water filter. Again, I picked this up from Walmart. This is an American Red Cross water filter. And the neat thing about this water filter is it's threaded on the bottom to actually screw on to a standard or most water bottles. So what you can do then is when you empty that water bottle out, you can use those bottles as an additional container to get more water and then you can drink it through this, uh, this filter because it does have a mouthpiece on it and it filters the water for you right away and you've got instant filtered water. Uh, this is supposed to be good for a thousand gallons. Now I know that's subjective, it's all gonna depend on how much particulate matter and things like that are in your water when you collect it, which is where your cotton cloths come in. If you filter it through that cotton cloth, these should last a good long time. Again, this is a three to four day survival pack, so I should be able to get three days worth of use out of this to filter out some water. Along with additional water filtering, I do have water purification tablets. Again, I picked these up, uh, I think at Walmart. These were actually the exact same brand I found on Amazon and they were cheaper to buy at Walmart. And since Amazon is now starting to charge you state tax, there was no reason to not buy these at Walmart as long as I was there. So I did pick up some water purification tablets. This will give me just another redundant option besides boiling water and the water filter to have good, safe, drinkable, potable water. Uh, wipes. Uh, I picked up a pack of dude wipes. These were very inexpensive. Uh, again, three to four days is all I'm looking for out of this kit. So I did pick up some dude wipes. These are kind of a comfort item. Uh, they're nice to have, if you will. So I did pick up a pack of those just to help clean my body and uh, help clean myself up after the infamous uh, number two in the field. Uh, additionally, I've also got some wet naps. Uh, and I put these in here because I had them. These are things that you generally get at a restaurant. You know, if you like KFC, you pick up a bunch of KFC wet naps. If you've ever watched or watched the movie called The Book of Eli with uh, Denzel Washington, uh, the post-apocalyptic world, those were actually a commodity and he was actually able to trade those in the movie. So save the wet naps. If you go to KFC, pick up a few extras, throw them in your pocket. They don't care. And then uh, I did put some plastic, or plastic spoons and forks in here again. So when I'm cooking my meals, I don't have to eat with a stick. I've got a couple of pieces of uh, plastic where I can use. Again, comfort items, nice to haves. Additionally, in my survival pack, I've got a uh, very minimal medical kit here. It's not much. I've got some Neosporin in here. I've got some Afterbite. I've got a, a few smaller Band-Aids and a couple of larger Band-Aids in here. But the big thing that I've got in here is some Excedrin and I've got my meds, my personal meds. I've got enough medication in here for five days, one day more than what the pack is intended for, three to four days. So I've got my, my medication here prescribed by my doctor, and I've also got a bottle of Tylenol in here, uh, some extra strength Tylenol for those muscle aches and things like that after you've done a whole day of walking when you get to be my age. It's kind of nice to have some Tylenol at the end of the day. Uh, just, this is just your basic boo-boo kit. I'm not going to be doing any, uh, 
trauma repairs or or anything like that. I'm not going to be able to uh, fix a sucking chest wound with this or anything like that. This is just your basic boo-boo kit. And I figured, what the heck, I'll throw it in here. But the big thing is to have uh, a few days worth of supply of your own personal medication if you require that. Additionally, with that personal medication and the boo-boo kit, I threw in a small bottle of mosquito repellent. Uh, depending on the time of year and when you're walking, this is 100% DEET. It's supposed to last 10 hours. It's made by Repel. You can, again, buy this at Walmart. Uh, very small, fits right in the pack, doesn't take up any room. And that way you can keep yourself from getting eaten alive if you are walking at the time of the year when bugs are an issue. A couple of more nice-to-haves here. Uh, I've got a couple of Sharpie markers in here. Uh, Sharpies are nice. They write on absolutely anything. You can basically smooth off a piece of wood and write on it. Or if you live in an area that there's birch trees, you can write on birch bark with a Sharpie marker. You can write on yourself uh, with your Sharpie marker. You can write on any number of things. You know, the, the pack or the packaging of the food. You can leave a note for somebody, things like that. So carry a couple of Sharpie markers with you. Again, doesn't take up hardly any room in your pack. No reason to not have those in here. And then uh, a recharging kit or a auxiliary battery charger for my smartphone, for my iPhone. Uh, there are various ones of these that you can get. You can also get a solar pack. Uh, I know a lot of people carry solars, but again, the point of this kit is two to three to four days. This should give me enough charge power if I'm, if I'm judicious with how I use my phone, you know, turn it off or go to airplane mode when I'm not using it, things of that effect. This battery pack should be enough to recharge my battery in the event that I need to. And then cash. This would be the 11th C of survivability. If you're still in a, if something just happened, you know, the EMP burst or whatever, you know, the event just happened, cash is still going to have an inherent value. There's enough greedy sons of bitches out there where cash is going to mean something. So I threw $100 worth of cash in here. It's not much, but it might get you you know, a bottle of water or something. If the event needs it, you've got some cash in here. This is going to stay in my pack as well. And then finally, let's get the elephant out of the room. I do have a firearm in my pack. Now, don't, just because I have it, don't go automatically throwing one in your pack. If you happen to live in a state that doesn't allow concealed carry, this might be illegal. So you're going to have to make this judgment call. I am by no means telling you, you should put one in here. But if you live in a state where concealed carry is okay, or you have a concealed weapon license or something like that, it certainly can't hurt. Uh, this I put in here is a uh, Taurus 605 357 Magnum revolver. It holds five shots. I do keep it loaded because I do have a concealed carry license. And this gun will stay in my pack in the holster with a retention strap, which will cover the hammer, which means that there's no way this gun can go off inadvertently. And then I do have a box of ammunition to go along with it so that I do have extra ammunition along with my firearm. Like I said, I'm in no way telling you that this is what you should carry. You have to make that decision yourself. This is something I'm putting in my bag. And there you have it, everything I'm putting inside of my survival bag. Now, like I said, over the course of time, I will probably upgrade this stuff and I will add and take things away. But one thing I am gonna do with it is I'm actually going to use it and I'm going to practice with it. I'm going to go out and I'm going to do overnight or two nighters out in the out in the woods like this or out, out somewhere where I can practice using this stuff, see what I like, see what I don't like, change things out. And that's that's kind of not only the practicality of the whole concept, but partially the fun. Part of this is just having fun. How far can you push your skills? How far can you push yourself with minimal equipment to survive a couple of nights in a day or a couple of days out in the wilderness, out in the woods with just what you can carry on your back. And that's all kind of the part of the fun of it. And like I said earlier, I, I need to get out and do more things that are active. Uh, this jacket I'm wearing never used to be smooth on the front, but it's kind of smooth on the front now. I want to get it so that I can wear a jacket like this and it's not smooth on the front anymore. So let's go ahead and wrap this video up. Now, as always, if you're liking what you saw here today, please let me know. Hit me with the like and subscribe down below. Make sure you ring that notification bell. YouTube is getting really weird uh, with some of their things. I've had reports of people that have just 
randomly been unsubscribed. I have had reports of people who say the video has never been published or that they don't find it. They have to go into my video feeds and physically look. And I would, I would actually encourage you to go into my past video feeds and take a look at some of the things. I've even got some playlists out there. Uh, all the product reviews I've done is in one playlist. I've got another playlist with all the all the firearms reviews I've done, you know, like this Taurus 605 is one of the firearms I reviewed. Uh, so I encourage you to go back and look at those things. There's, there's a lot of neat stuff out there and I've got, I put out a video a week. So there's a lot of videos out there that you can, you can take a look at and just help me out. I don't ever ask you for uh, Patreon money or tips or anything like that. Although the tip button is active down below. I don't ever ask you for stuff like that. I just ask you for views ask you for your thumbs ups, ask you for your comments. And that's really how we're going to grow this channel. With that, this is Ed from Jack of All Trades. As always, thank you to my longtime subscribers. Thank you to everybody who watches these videos. I really do truly appreciate it. And we will see you on the next video.